All right, so let's let's do some work. Uh, you still uh, stretchy from yesterday. So the needle at the bottom of the C, the one of the main goals for that is this same kind of stretching that we do when we do this this cheek only when we practice here is is actually contained within needle at the bottom of the C. So the same idea of reaching this thumb over the top. In Tai Chi, we're using the thumb quite a bit to, to lead. When we talk about holding the moon in the chest, the punch is coming. We use that thumb uh, to guide. And so in needle at the bottom of the C, this thumb is, is leading the circle. And the idea is if someone has, has attached to your wrist, if they grab to, to your wrist, is by stretching this way and leading, we're gonna bring it back down in here. In the form, <clears throat> when we do it, we have a shoulder bump and, and uh, like a sideways ward off for diagonal flying. And then the circle turns, and we wanna turn the circle right over top of the head so that it's coming, staying on the center line around this way and turning down. So, <clears throat> Uh, by the way, the, the footwork for this one, you want to keep the back straight. The, what happens with the legs, with the feet and legs, is, is not quite as important. That's individual. Some people have the leg strength and have the flexibility and can sink all the way down on one leg. We're not going to practice that right now, just for day-to-day for, uh, -day use. You basically just need to shift your opponent off of their center just enough. So you could technically do needle at the bottom of the C to here. And it's enough to, to change the opponent's position. If you feel like you need to go all the way, try to keep the Tai Chi principles as much as you can so that we don't have an injury. So you can practice for a very, very long time. Keep the back straight and then you can reach all the way. So. Uh, let's do just a little bit of <clears throat> a little bit of warm up just to calibrate. Let your feet touch. Bring the head top all the way up. Relax your shoulders. Bring the hands together in the center. Take a deep breath. <clears throat> we'll do a little bit of breathing, so as if you're gathering the energy. You can go at your own pace. Before any activity, even if it's something that doesn't require a lot of physical exercise, sometimes during the daytime you have to make a phone call and you know it's going to be very draining. You can take some time to do some qigong and inflate with whether you consider it to be oxygen, whether you consider it to be qi, because sometimes dealing with those kind of people can be very uh, de-energizing, can be very deflating. So before you go into the activity, take some time to charge up with lots of energy. And wherever you're at on the next one, just bring everything back to the center. And then, uh, while, we're, while we're talking, we can practice a very basic one. As if you're drawing the letter X, but you're just drawing the outline of each diagonal. So the hands going past each other to the corners in this way. <clears throat> one of the things, one of the Taiji principles that we don't... Yeah, question. my neck and shoulder area, 
and since I can't go to my acupuncturist because of COVID, anything, any like points on my hands or feet that will like help that part? So, okay, so stretching the neck, uh, that's, we can use hands and feet, but this is one of the reasons when we, when we do this exercise is locking the shoulders. Yeah, it's locking the shoulders and then turning around the head top. So as if this was the, the demo that I used the other day was, was a towel. And so, or you can imagine a blanket where if you lock the base of it and then you're pulling up. So to open all of that, uh, there's another one that we can do very basic. Some of this coming from a, from a pigua. So if you have your arms and you allow them to hit in the back and the head keeping the spine straight. So I'm, as if I'm rocking the body forwards and backwards. And allowing the arms, you want the, the backs of the hands to be able to touch. It's easier to do if you allow them to go lower. The higher up, the more stretch you get here, the lower, the easier it is to, to touch the two. So that will open the front. So uh, <clears throat> when we talk about acupuncture theory, a lot of times for stuff in the back, especially the upper back, is really difficult to get to in the mid back here, right? So because we can't work those points readily with our, with our hands, or even if we can reach the point, we can't actually deliver power the same way we can deliver power to another section. So uh, when you get something that's in the back that's stuck, this is where, uh, I learned this actually from, from Master Yoon, is you can work the point opposite. So if you know it's a point right back here, you can find the acupressure point on the front and work all the way through the back on this side. So wherever it's at, and you should be able to feel it if it's, uh, you're, if, if there's a problem in the back, the front, the pec, pec or the deltoid or uh, whatever corresponding muscle group in the front will also feel uh, tight. This is also another place because you have the, because you have access, you can use a tool, right? Something to, to help assist putting the power into the into that area right this is acupressure right the stick is working but instead of trying to see here there's no power I can't make any power back here but let's say for instance uh, you can use the stick to find the point let's say you know it's just outside the spine on this side next to the shoulder blade if you use that you can find on the other side so just across my center line, right here, I can work that point in the front, right? You can use your, your thumb like this. You can use your thumb knuckle. You can use the pinky, pinky knuckle. But here on the front, it's much easier to make power. In the back, the only way really to do it is to rely on some other, to use the wall, or to have another person put a needle back there. So, uh, the reason I'm mentioning all of this is because the exercise that we just did, this one. So, because I found that this is sore. It's sore. It's sore, yeah. Yeah, and that probably means it's on the back, it's tight. So, there's some combination of, uh, the, and they're usually, it's like this, the, if, the, if the body is a, is a net this way, if the back is tight, the front is tight. If it's closed this way, if the back feels all hunched up, that means the front is all closed up. So we want to be able to open that. That's why this exercise, it seems like it would benefit us quite a bit to be stretching here and have the back opening this way. But also by opening this, uh, shaking the whole structure. So this is one of the one of the paradoxes of Tai Chi, one of the paradoxes of acupuncture, we go, we open the front to, uh, to fix the back, or we work on the front to adjust the back, something like that. Uh, and then, like we said, turning, turning the head and neck. 
really, I think some of the best ones coming from, from uh, a Pigua. With this one, again, try to keep your neck straight. You don't have to stand with this. You can keep the feet parallel, but keep your neck straight. This one is a good one uh, for that. Another one is imagine that you have some kind of strange haircut that has a, these points coming off the top of it like this. Imagine if the rest of my body is relaxed. In fact, I'm going to allow it to be very obviously sunk. And then I'm, I, you want to turn as if I'm drawing two circles with this point on the back of my head. Another way to, to think of this one is like I'm drawing a figure eight with my nose. But you want to keep power to the head top. So in this one, the spine is, the neck is straight. The head top is turning, the, the face is turning. And when you reach the apex of the circle, you want to be able to reach as if you're <clears throat> like your, uh, the example I was told was like a giraffe. And like a giraffe reaching for the top of the tree, extending its neck, to, and then going around the tree, and then to the tree on the other side, reaching all the way to the top around the tree. And so this kind of thing. Uh, like I said, one of the one of the best things is taking, if you can use your thumb, or again, using a, a device, using something to apply the pressure into that space, right? Thumb works, even a pen, just a regular, you know, these classic, classic kind of pen that looks like this, right? It has a cap on the back side, they make them in can get a blue one too, it's semi-transparent. You can use that and apply pressure. This is acupuncture doesn't exist in the in the Mandarin. There is no word for acupressure in Mandarin Chinese. Those words were invented by a, a German guy, I think his last name was Wilhelm, and he invented those terms to describe the the aspect of Chinese folk medicine of applying pressure very accurately to a, to a point on the meridian system. So the same thing, you can use your thumb, that's fine. Charlotte, what we're talking about is accessing the back through the front. So uh, for people that have stress, and everybody has the same thing, by the way. People, sometimes people, they say, oh, why, why do I have stress here? Everybody has stress here. And so the back, because it's so difficult to reach, this is why, this is also why dogs like to have the scratch on the back and in the lower back, because they can't reach back there, right? So that's a space that, ah, oh, it's, it's getting your back scratched. So the same reason, we can't get power. If there's tissue that's, that feels very tense back here, we can't reach it, there's no power. Even if I can use a device, right, it's not the same as, as I can make power if I'm hitting myself in the front. So, uh, because we can't reach that, the, the dynamic we're talking about is the, the energy system is mirrored on either side of the body. So, like when we talk about in the hand, Lao Gong, the palm, this way, for whatever reason, if we can't work on this one, we can work on the back, right? So, uh, yeah, even if you can, and, and that's the thing, even if you can have something that can reach all the way back there, you can't make power. Right? There's no way to make power. Even if you can hit it, right? You can hit it pretty hard with some kind of weapon. It's not the same as if how you can reach yourself in the front. So my point is, yeah, go ahead. In fact, you're looking for with those, like those fairly firm alpha balls that you lie down on them. Yeah, yeah, but you're missing my point. You guys, both of you, are still reaching to the back. I, the, you, it's, that's, that's the whole point. Don't do that. Go to the front. <laughs> Wherever you feel it, you have to find where the tightness is in the back. So, like, you can use the stick on this side, and if it's at the top, and find out high or low, and then inside or outside, towards the center of the spine or outside, and then that corresponding point on the front is where you can massage, right? There's, there's, the point is, yeah, if you can use the ball, that's that's great. But some people have a difficult time with that. 
and you don't even actually need to apply any pressure whatsoever. You can simply touch the point that's opposite and mentally do the, the internal energy work to, to heal it, right? So uh, this is, again, the yin and yang. Some teachers feel like a very, I, I like to give what's, what's considered to be a very powerful treatment. Powerful treatment means very yang, very heavy external uh, I don't mind to, to hit myself or uh, somebody that I'm working on. As opposed to, there's other people, they just, without even touching, right? They just keep the hand over top of the surface and they can affect the energy. And so this is the spectrum of yin and yang for acupuncture and qigong. Uh, the, the acupuncture is so rough, not only is it hitting, but it's actually penetrating. You're, you're taking a needle and putting it inside of the body. And so that's sort of the, the yang uh, end of the spectrum, the furthest we want to go. And the yin is, even without holding your hand over it, simply by putting the mind in the correct place, right? It seems like we're not, we don't even do anything. It's the opposite of a yang, like very heavy duty treatment. And they're both effective, and they're both effective at different things. Uh, tension in your body, especially in your back, a lot of times, can be alleviated just with your mind. So one of the reasons teachers talk about doing this kind of standing, like holding the ball, or in this in this particular school, we have another standing meditation. If you get into this posture and you can stand for some uh, time, you can, you can walk away from it feeling as if you've given yourself a full back massage, or that you've that you you've gone to a masseuse and they've worked out all of the the knots and kinks in your neck, back, uh, and, and in your, your structure by allowing the energy to flow. But this is uh, sort of a, a higher level. If you can, you have to stand and you have to be able to meditate sort of long enough to, to relax that tension. But the long enough is also sending your mind into the places where there's tension, asking yourself why it's there, and then releasing it. Right? And because that's difficult to do, and, and uh, we're Americans, we want to be able to pick up the phone and order the food right away and have it delivered and, and eat. We want to feel the, we don't want to stand to wait to do it. So that's why I'm saying use, use the tool, use something to, to work on uh, those points. And uh, this is sort of, by the way, uh, for, for people in, in uh, our age, demographic, we'll say middle age, right? Just to be polite to ourselves and, and everybody else. This is a struggle for everyone, um, especially this. We've done this exercise where we say reach over your shoulder and, and grab your, grab trapezius like a handle for a luggage and feel how much tension there is there. And when you feel that, you feel, oh, it's, you, you, it feels like, oh, I want to dig into it, but you can't. So under your collarbone, just over top of your collarbone, if you press, you feel it's so tight, the tendons. And then try the other side. One side feels more tight than the other. So you reach across, you feel there's tension. It feels like uh, it's hard. So the same thing on the front. If you just, like you're drawing an outline around your collarbone, you'll feel places, it's very tight. And so you feel, is it easier to press on the front? Is it easier to make more power in the front than the back? And so again, the same thing. This is another reason why this, uh, for Charlotte, if you've seen the, the uh, Tong Bay of Pigua coming from Sanjo, they're doing this exercise, which is almost like a variation of swing hands which the Baji Pigua uses more, but this one is here. There's another one uh, that I can, I'll just demonstrate, where if we're scooping, we bring the hands up, and then opening, and this is important, with the thumbs facing away, so that the backs of the hands reaching the thigh. So breathing deep, inhaling up, turning the palms up and over, and then out that way. So this, like you're taking this whole, part here and opening it to expand, right? It's a vertical variation of this one, 
This one is a horizontal, we're swinging the hands this way. This one is we make a vertical loop this way, right? And so all of this is meant to imagine you have, uh, if you have a post, right, like a fence post stuck inside the dirt, and you want to move the fence post around. So you sort of doing this, right? Go ahead, question, yes. Yes, right? That's sort of what we were talking about the other day with this one, right? This this thing, you can try to make power, but it's better if you just let it free fall. The same thing with this one, when you're doing this. If you can allow the arms to reach a point where they're, where they're uh, moving sort of freely on their own. And by the way, this, this one, you can get... This is something you can uh, get out of that exercise as well, turning that way. Let the backs of the hands, backs of the fingers touch. This is also, this is a good cheat going to, uh, one of the things that happens, the same, the same way we can't reach our back, we don't like having the backs of our hands touched. It's a weird thing. But you ever see old people in the backs of their hands, don't look any good? So what we can do is, before we get there, is take our hands and just... Hit the back of one hand against the other one. Feels weird. And then change, turn the palm over. Try to get the fingers done. That thing. Right. So, uh, yeah, what was what was the other one? This one is needle at the bottom of the sea. So, so Charlotte, before you uh, logged in, the question was about the difference between needle at the bottom of the sea in the second section and the first section. And uh, we're going to review the, I'm oh, sorry, the second and third section. We're going to review the one from the third section. I think last Wednesday we did something from the second section. Uh, and this week we're going to go into the, to the third section. So to review, uh, needle at the bottom of the sea is starting from repulse the monkey, and we have the right side pressing forward. Power is approaching from the from the right side, so that's why we're opening. And the concept that's that's presented there is that power that's coming from the right is if it's in this direction, right, is coming along this angle. And I've done repulse the monkey, and I'm here. As that power is coming, I want to turn to the so around it, right? So it's pretty loud. So as the opponent reaches in, we want to coil that, and then there's a shoulder bump. And the shoulder bump looks like this taking the place of the other thing, right? So I describe it like in pool, when the one pool ball hits the other one, if there's a center spot right there, I want to take that space and knock the other thing into the distance. So we have this unwind to the right. And remember, we use the center to coil to the right side, shoulder bump. And the last one is like ward off, but instead of going forward, or like we have uh, part horse's mane going forward this way, this one is going diagonally. And this is to split the opponent's structure, right? So they, they're uh, knocked over. Uh, yeah, so after this one, needle at the bottom of the sea, this hand, we assume someone has connected to this hand. So we're going to, using our center, turn the waist, and then the thumb leads over and down. And so for this one, uh, TC a lot of times would use uh, uh, two different examples. The first one being a flower. Uh, lotus is a lot of times used in Chinese culture, in, in uh, Buddhist culture, the idea of the enlightened mind growing out of the, the muddy mind. So, so uh, in the third section, we have something called bailian, which is the lotus kick. And so in this one, you want to imagine that you're making this shape like, the, like uh, the, the base of a flower. So after the ward off, 
If my palm is facing the sky, my thumb is doing the drawing, is making this flower shape, and then the finger is turning all the way to the bottom of the sea, so my thumb is facing ours. So if I face the camera, after I do my last repulse the monkey, I open to the side, I have shoulder bump, my ward off, and then if you watch my right hand, it makes a, a circle. It's facing forward and then turning as it sinks to the bottom of the sea and then comes up and goes forward, right? So if I use the, the center line, my ward off, circle, turn, Senatong Bay goes forward when I turn, block, punch, kick, is like that, right? Questions, thoughts, comments. That's sec second section, right? You want to do the other one. Second needle, that is with the, with the other hand. The right. So, so what we just did is from the second section. So in the third section, after we finish the last repulse the monkey here, the movement is the same. Whether we bring this foot or whether we bring this foot together, right? We have the last press forward, opening to the side, shoulder bump. But now, instead of this, this, the hand that's higher turning, we use the hand that's lower because it's the same idea, but the person is, is attached to the lower hand instead of the higher hand. So when it's here, this hand, I want to turn my thumb over and down. And then the same, the same foot. So if we're here, uh, let's see. Repulse the monkey, shoulder bump, expand. This one, this foot comes forward. On this one, the other foot. And what's happening with this other hand? In the first one, is this is just a cover. They're actually both turning into the center this way. So the main action is here. Because this is the yang hand, the other hand, yin, is waiting. And then as we come up, it changes. This one is yin, this one becomes the yang pressing hand. So in the third section, shoulder bump, we open. Needle at the bottom of the seat is the left hand making this arc. Right? Imagine if you're gripping onto my hand, right? You, you grab my wrist, you want to detain me from where, where I'm at. And I'm turning this loop this way so that I'm leading the power out to the side and then I return the power back to the center down here. The idea is to, to force the opponent to follow us, but we don't use power, right? So instead of, if they, if they grab my wrist, instead of trying to turn, we want to lead the power so we're just giving them like a suggestion to go this way. When they start to follow, then we turn back, right? And the idea is that uh, the opponent doesn't, doesn't want to follow us, so we're leading slowly with torque from the inside. Instead of power this way, your center driving the turn. And then from here, once, the, once they figure out we're turning, they want to hold on very tight, this. All we need is this, because once the other person's structure is compromised, then we can uh, push them over, right? This kind of thing. So needle at the bottom of the seat, reviewing before uh, Charlotte signed up, we were talking about, you don't have to go all the way down. Uh, you may see Tai Chi performers, competition uh, people that can go all the way this way, right? Not needed. Uh, in the, for the application, all we need to do is move the opponent's center just a, a small distance, just to get them off of their route. And once we have that structure compromised, we can, we can do whatever we like, right? So, if we're facing the camera, just like the exercise where we turn like this, and we do it on both sides, right? This is the, the first half of it is needle at the bottom of the sea is once it gets to here, it turns and then going down this way. And the same thing on the other side. It goes this way and then the palm is facing one direction and it turns to the other direction. 
So this loop, by the way, you may notice the same when we do cloud hands, right? The same idea, palm facing up, turning. The, the first half of the action is like uh, this idea of flicking something or uh, how many know the, the thing from the, is it from the 90s? I don't know, it was the 2000s, it's pretty old. Right, this one, the first one, the first one, without the snap, right? But just the fling, like you, like you have something and you want to throw it, right? I don't know, I have a box. Right, it's over there, this, throw, this complete throw. It's, but then after that throw, instead of letting the power go out, it's, we put a loop on it so the power returns. So it goes out, comes back, and in this one we drive it straight down our center line to the front. But in, in uh, cloud hands, if the power is from the side, the first one is the flick, right? There's something, imagine if you're punching right towards me, and before the power can, can reach where I'm at, I can connect to it with this soft kind of sticking power like a towel or a rag and flick. Okay, so now the power is not coming directly towards me. And instead of letting the power just go out that way, I could, right, the person punching, I flick, and now I stand there and say, what? But instead, instead of letting that power completely exit to that, the trajectory where it's going, I let my thumb return the power and then drive it forward, right? So this, this idea of recycling power on a loop is what we want to do because it allows us, it keeps us from, from being inefficient, from, from losing our power block and then strike. Those are two movements, right? If I have to flick and then punch, there's two. But I can make that all one thing, flip, turn, press, right? This is the same idea, needle at the bottom of the seat. We may think of it as an open, a turn, and a press down, but it's only one loop. We want to try to keep the opponent grabbing and following us as we do this. And we do that because most people are only using their arm, right? When you watch people opening the door, they're pulling and pushing like this. They only use their arm. So when we're doing this, if we're doing correct Tai Chi, there's one waist turn for every posture. So as they grab my wrist, I can make an invisible line between my wrist and my center so that my center is very strong and turning. And then when it comes back, we use gravity, right? The thing that we've been doing, this one, we'll do it a few times. You can practice if you leave your hand out there and allow it to hit. The thing that we've been doing with this one, with the gravity drops, right? We're always trying to use gravity to our advantage. It's a constant force that's going downwards. So if somebody grabs onto us, one of the first things we want to do is get them to go with gravity. But just like double press, instead of just, if they grab us, instead of just trying to go downwards, they're going to resist. So instead, we have this turning, like Bon La Chue, that goes up first. And then just as it starts to go up, it goes out. And just as it starts to go out, it comes back in. And as it comes back in, it goes down. So there's, it's, the shape of it is like a 3D Tai Chi shape, like a paisley or half of a tennis ball. It comes up, over, and down. The same shape we're using when we do plow hands. The same shape when we do just even the first quarter of the Al Show's hook. This first part that comes up. And then we just flop the hand over the target this way. Single whip. So this kind of shape is what we started doing today, like you're drawing an X. And the hand's just drawing the outline of the two sides of the X, so that there's always a space in the center. And this is, becomes very basic ward off. <clears throat> and you can see the diagonal flying, even needle at the bottom of the seat. So now let's look at the third section, right, so that we don't uh, lose, lose the time, because it's uh, about quarter after now. So the same thing, we've just done Repulse the Monkey one, two, three times. We have Shear Fei, which is diagonal flying, shoulder bump, and then this, 
the ward off. And then this last one, I'm bringing my hand up over, and when I bring it to the center, it's coming this way. We can shift. <clears throat> By the way, this one can have, if you'd like to uh, do more than these two half circles. How many have seen the exercise when we do di buhua? This hand folds, and we use this hand here like a pry bar to, to use that to pop that other hand off there. You can you can do the same thing with needle you know, to bottom of the CB. You don't have to. TC taught it where when this is here, this other hand, but you can use that other hand to distract your opponent. If they're not letting go, you can use it to dig into the soft tissue around their knuckles or under the skin and the nails, all these different things. Uh, so here, at the, at the least, right? And by the way, you see the same yin-yang posture. This is almost like when we play the guitar, we lift hands to up posture, right? It has the same feeling. You should see the same uh, shapes coming out of the, the form. So, uh, last brush in press, open, shoulder bump, and then here they've connected to the lower hand, so I turn it up and over, and then as it's going down the center line, the palm turning, right? So imagine a needle, a big needle, right, or anchor from a boat. When it's going, it can sink like this, right? They have, a, they have there's a chain attached to it, so it can the boat can just the needle can just sink this way straight, but can also can be turning. So we want the feeling of the anchor going into the ocean, and as it's sinking, it's turning, because that turning is what keeps it difficult to hold on to when somebody's trying to hold on to the wrist. If you've got your hand here, and they've managed to still hold on to it. By the way, this one is even better to break the, the grip than Bon La Shui, depending on the situation. Uh, if, if you can get it to here, it's difficult for people to hold on to. This is almost a round shape, right? This is a very powerful position. So if, if you can get the hand from here to here, already you've won. If you can manage to turn your wrist all the way around and get it to here, and the other person is still holding on, they have like some kind of crazy tentacle grip or something, right? It's, it's impossible for, for a human to hold on in that way. Unless, and maybe they have a rope, they've done like a lasso, or they've done like, you know, in the movies, fantastic action movies, they have a, they'll have a whip or a grappling hook that will wrap around. So maybe they have something like that's going on and you wanna use this thing to coil as much as you can to pull it down. But human cannot hold on this whole arc. If they do, it means that they've let go and re-grabbed. We can talk about that. But this one, this arc, is impossible to hold on to. And then when we get to here, it's, it's easier to see with another person. Try it the next time you have somebody in your pod and you just say, just grab my wrist. And then try, see if you can use your center to lead their energy and their attention upwards. And then turn it and, and drive it downwards. And again, we only need to drive it more than they expect. We don't need to sink all the way to the bottom. <clears throat> uh, a reiteration, if you can go all the way down, make sure that you protect your back, neck, knees, and joints by doing it correctly. So, in the third section, the form looking like this. And so what happens with the sand palm bay? In the first one, in the uh, the first kneel at the bottom of the seat, if the person is still holding on, I can control that and lift that and step through to press. In the second one, if they're holding on here, I can lift that, reach under, and do a hand transfer to press. Just like in the third section, when we transfer this way, or in the second section, when we pull, transfer, this way. The same thing, this hand going down, once it comes up, I can reach under here, and then San Pombe is the same as in the second section. We'll be more clear when we when we have a chance to see what's happening with a with a person. So as we're if they've uh, managed to stay connected to our hand this way, when we come up, 
I can reach under this way to connect. And then this hand is free. And when I step forward, even if I can't break free, let's say, for instance, they've stayed connected here, I can use this bend to drive my elbow forward. That will free this wrist to get to this one. <clears throat> Wait, what? Well, let's practice again. So from the word off, the left hand turns up and over. Kneel at the bottom of the C. And then when I step forward, my right hand goes underneath, covers the gate. My left hand and foot go forward, fan through back. <clears throat> Make sense? Let's do that one more time. So, in the third section, we have the left hand spiraling up and over, coming up. Fan through back. <clears throat> By the way, this is this is introduced in the second section as a much bigger Tai Chi concept. Uh, I'm I'm glad that it's uh, that you two are here. It's, it's, a, it's more advanced because San Tom Bay, depending on how you pronounce it, and and I think this is sort of a, a function of what it is, can can mean a couple of different things. And uh, the fan through back or fan over the back, this is the idea for this is that the arms are connected. If you've been studying at Yishui, you know that uh, he's been talking about San Kong Bay is the idea is the arms are just one thing. So when we do this, this uh, turning for, for uh, diagonal flying, the arms are connected. It's not just one arm. That's just here. There's, it's weak. But if I make the tension go between both arms, if I make the power go between the two, it looks like this. Right? And so what that means is if my if my right arm, this arm here, is winding, this other arm is acting as a counterbalance. So even if this one arm is shorter than the other, right? Sounds funny, like like uh one arm shorter than the other. That's, right? The same thing. This other arm can be counterbalancing. This is a San Tom Bay. Right? So we start teaching in the, in the second section when you're teaching the form to people learning. Uh, they can be practicing all different types of uh, ideas and, until about this section when they learn in the second section. They should learn this concept of San Tom Bay. Just what we talked about a second ago. Yeah, uh, question no. Okay. Is when we do high design, needle at the bottom of the sea, or dibuhua, this concept that the arms are one length, and by pulling this one, it shifts to this side. That means this is one piece that comes up and over. That's the concept of San Tong Bay. There's only one piece, only one stretch of arm. Like if, if we were... Uh, wacky waving inflatable arm flailing uh, tube person, right? You would have one pool noodle that goes from one side to the other. There's only one. So the movement San Tong Bay is this idea of this. As the person is pressing my top hand, as the power comes into this side, it goes back out the other side. Because there's only one Thing. As they push on this end of the pole noodle, the other end of the pole noodle shoots out. It goes through my, that power goes through my back. They press into this side. That's the fan through the back, is the power going through the back through the one uh, reach. And so this is, by the time the student has reached the second section, they should start to be getting this idea. It's not just one arm ever, right? Even grasp the sparrow's tails. This other one is waiting. There's a structural weight behind it to catch and ward off. Even though we're warding off this way, this other hand providing a structural base to give the power going in both directions. So this is, a lot of stuff in Tai Chi is very weird, it seems backwards, right? We, we use the front to reach the back. Same thing, uh, this is for people that want to 
keep up with your, your leg health, your leg strength. If you want to be able to straighten your legs like very well, then you should bend them, right? By doing a practice that creates as many bends, one bend, two, three, four at the ankle, five, six, seven. So creating a lot of bends. Or if you like to keep your legs, if you like to be able to bend them, straighten them, right? It's a paradox. This kind of stretching, straightening will help you bend them. Bending will help you straighten them. Reaching the front will help you get the back. The same idea, always true. If you want to take the opponent downwards, you lift them up first and then guide them where you like to guide them. And use gravity on your side. Yeah. Hang on, uh, wait, hang on one second. Go ahead. Second needle when you come up. Okay, oh yeah, on the way up. So once we open to the side, someone is attached to the lower hand, we're gonna make just a simple arc Left hand, right foot, needle at the bottom of the seat. And whether you do this, whether you send palm back, shift the power to this hand, raise, step, press, or whether you open, kneel at the bottom of the seat, and then like we said, raise with this hand, reach the right one underneath to swap, and then change here. Either way is correct, right? One is just more complex. Again, this is, uh, since we're talking about teacher training type stuff, in the beginning, you just want to teach the posture. Just teach this, because most people just trying to memorize the order, the structure. Then later, once the finer details come out, we can say, oh, this hand is leading and this hand is guiding, or, oh, this other hand is still attached, and so we can reach underneath to separate it, step forward, and break the pattern that way. Uh, in the beginning, it has to be simple. Later, we add, you know, Jinji Duli in the beginning is this. And then we add this. And then from there, we add this. And then we add the next one. So it's like building complexity, just when you see uh, we take basic, basic building blocks. And, and it's something that until you sort of learn part of the form to see, wait, what's happening here? Oh, that part expands. That's what we were talking about with <clears throat> whether you learn from myself or somebody else, and whether you learn Taiji, Shingi, Bagua, Sun style, Yang style, Chen style, any kind of Qigong or Chinese martial art, the, the principles when we practice Taiji harmony, keeping the center line, making everything balanced and level, these are ideas that are, that are uh, sort of paramount to, to Chinese philosophy. And so when you're practicing Bagua, anything, whatever you practice, and you start to apply those same principles, it will improve the, improve the practice. So it becomes, you may learn something new, and then by practicing it, you can expand upon it from there. Questions, thoughts, comments? We have a few minutes left. Yeah. Cool. Let's do a little bit of breathing. So uh, just right from where you're at, the same thing we we're doing, reaching up the thumb, going all the way around, coming back down and out, breathing deep, reach up, turning, breathing, inhale, and again, the same thing, this is just a qigong, it's just an exercise, but you can increase it to a taiji qigong by turning the waist every time. Time the movement with the breathing. And you can add a martial arts application. You can add a self-defense. Sometimes self-defense is simply clearing the air. So if you have an incense burning and you don't like it, you can wave your hands in the air. If there's a fog and you can't see through it, you can wave your hands like waving in a cloud, cloud hands, breathing. Whatever you've done, balance it out. I'm not counting, and I don't even know which side I've started on. We can watch the video later. Breathing deep, make sure you do one. 
on each side. <clears throat> and when you reach the end, bring everything back to the center. Bring your hands back to the center. <clears throat> we'll do a quick closing. Move your mind into the, the navel, into the Dantian. Internally, take a second to smile to yourself while internally, the volume doesn't seem to change, but whether you whisper it, whether you sing it, whether you yell it, take a second to give thanks to yourself. One long last deep breath. That's it. By the way, I have uh, I have not been publishing videos, so uh, I'm going to get on that. We'll, uh, we'll put some out this week. Uh, thank you for coming out to class. As usual, feel free to text, uh, call, email with any questions, comments, thoughts, ideas. Have a good night.